How can I encourage my kids to have a healthy relationship with their internet gadgets? Um, so, as a parent, are you worried that your child spends more time on their mobile devices than with you? Do you think they're a bit obsessed with their smartphones? Or are your little ones, are they watching too many YouTube videos or playing on their games too often? Um, so these are all concerns that parents have and as a parent I share these concerns as well. So too often we have no choice but to accessorise our children with laptops and smartphones in this gadget filled world. So we have to take responsibility for their disciplined behaviour and moderate the way they use them. Part of the problem, we, we do actually create this problem for ourselves. We buy our kids gadgets to keep them safe. Or we're thinking it'll help them with the homework and keep them busy, you know, when, when we're busy doing, you know, whatever we need to do. But there are um, problems that we don't foresee. So as parents, um, we can definitely take steps to change the situation. And um, it, it will be hard. It's, it's, a di it's difficult to um, monitor and try to control you know, how much, you know, our kids are using internet and they're, they're, um, and they're on the mobile phones and laptops and tablets and there's so many different devices, but it is an impossible, you know, you can do this, inshallah. Um, so here are some ways that, you know, you can um, curb your child's addiction, if we can call it that. Um, so number one, parental teamwork. Our duty as parents is very clearly outlined in the following hadith. Ibn Umar reported that the Prophet وسلم, said, Each of you is a shepherd and each of you is responsible for his flock. The Amir, ruler, who is, who is over the people, is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. A man is a shepherd in charge of the inhabitants of his household and he is responsible for his flock. A woman is a shepherdess in charge of her husband's house and children, and she is responsible for them. And a man's slave is a shepherd in charge of his master's property, and he is responsible for it. So each of you is a shepherd, and each of you is responsible for his flock. And that's um, in the book of Abu Dawud. Therefore, it's absolutely essential for parents to discuss and decide how to tackle the situation together as a team. So that's mum and dad. It, it, sh it can't be that one parent is taking responsibility for this and the other parent just leaves it to them, thinks, OK, they're dealing with it. Therefore, it's, it's not what it's taken care of. So um, what are the pros and cons of our kids having constant access to technology? Because um, that, that can happen sometimes. Now, the pros are... You know, TV shows, electronic games, mobile phones, they can be a brilliant resource for our children. Games aren't just enjoyable, they can help them expand their way of thinking, not only educationally, um, you know, but watching whether it's documentaries or, you know, where they are researching for their homework, you know, there, there is a place for um, the use of the internet and computers, but also in ways that they will need for the technology which future the web the web um and internet gives access to an amazing amount of knowledge using multimedia our children can convey their ideas in ways we could only dream of a decade ago you know if you think back um 20 years ago the only way you could do research was going to the library and picking up a book some, some may say that was a good thing um, but, you know, we we use it ourselves as adults so we can see, see the good in it. Now, what are the cons? Um, we must be aware of the downside technology for our children. To flourish in the real world, children still need emotional resilience, social competence and the basic skills of reading and writing. So we have to ensure that too much technology too soon doesn't threaten their real life development or expose them to harmful material. So... The main point here is you need to realise it is a problem. To, if you're allowing your kids to be on their devices and on the net and entertaining themselves constantly just in, in, in the unreal world, we could call it, that is a problem. That's the first thing to realise and that something needs to be done and you're going to, to do that as a couple, you know, as, as parents. So 
Num let's move on to step two then. So you do need to monitor what your child is watching. For children aged three and above, there are some good kids TV shows that can be interesting and educational. What's more, there are many shows you can enjoy with your kids together. So sensible television watching can contribute to child development and family life. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of rubbish, as we know. If children are allowed to have access to the net in the privacy of their bedroom without supervision, then it's very easy for them to access violent or sexually explicit movies, as well as YouTube videos with a lot of swearing, for example. Um, given that children learn by imitation, they will quickly begin mimicking what they hear and see. So, you know, we need to be aware. We, we know that there's bad stuff on, on the net and if you let your children have a TV or computer in their bedroom, you do not know when they are going on it. You, you cannot monitor them constantly. So what you need to do is insist that all internet connected devices such as tablets and console games are used in a family room and make sure you know what your child is doing on them. Take the TV and other mobile devices out of your kid's bedroom an alternative is to insist they have their bedroom door open when they are doing their homework on the computer. Uh, keeping the computer in your room too helps limit their usage to what they need to do on the computer. Monitor what your children watch on, watch on TV, i.e. films, um, and keep home entertainment in a shared area of the house to watch with them as often as possible. It's not about not trusting them, it's about protecting them from things they don't know. So that's an easy step. Keep it all in a room where you are, adults are constantly coming in and out. They're not, they can't close the door and just do and watch what they want. You're the adult, they're the child, you, you know better. Okay, moving on. Number three, have clear rules. Set rules for the use of all devices. Only allow mobile phone usage at, a, at certain hours in the evening or after homework has been completed. Um, if your kids are old enough to be using the computer on their own, they are old enough to understand that there are rules and they need to abide by, that they need to abide by. Breaking the rules, breaking them should not have a lesser consequence than if they broke a rule in the offline world, you know, in the real world. Having an open line of communication is crucial. The minute your kids start using the inter uh, sorry, let me repeat that. Having an open line of communication is crucial the minute your kids start using the internet more independently. So make sure you know as much as possible about any hardware and software that comes into your home. If you aren't able to put in the time and energy to find out about an electronic device, device don't let it over the threshold. Agree on time limits for lo logging on, playing, messaging, etc. Eat, you know, for each day and stick to them. No matter how much they nag or cry, don't give in just to silence them. So it shouldn't be the case that um, really for children at junior school, at primary school, to have a mobile phone, to have access to have their own tablet is ridiculous, frankly. It's you're asking for trouble. Um and then you then wonder, why aren't my children spending time with me? Why aren't they in this? They don't talk to me that much. They're being moody. They're being grumpy when I take it away from them. Don't give them. They do not need a mobile phone. They do not need a tablet. It's just because everyone else has it doesn't mean they need it. You, you need to be stronger and, um, you know, take, take back control if you don't um, or have control at the moment. Um, OK, let's move on to number four. Address online stranger danger. So you may feel like you're scaring your kids when talking to them about the dangers of being online, but it's better for them to be scared than to be unaware. Just as we prepare our kids for life in the real world, we should prepare them for life online. Parents are wary about their children having virtual friendships because of stories of paedophiles grooming children on the internet. It is well established that some people in chat rooms are not who they claim to be and both children and parents need to be alert to this. You need to remind your children that everyone online is a stranger. So tell your child never to give out their real address or phone number to anyone they meet on the net. Ensure they know that your key concern is their welfare. Explain the advantages and disadvantages of going up in a virtual world. 
Ensure your child knows that if they encounter anything on the net that makes them feel uncomfortable, embarrassed or worried, they should let you know and that you won't blame them, you won't get angry with them. This goes back to having an open line of communication. You are, if It's inevitable they will see stuff, but you need to speak to them about that stuff. Um, so, number five, prioritise real over virtual interaction. So what does that mean? Um, there's no doubt that a child's brain development depends on warm human contact and first-hand experiences of the world around them. When a child is young, they need to spend lots of time with their parents and other real people, you know, i.e. grandparents, other children, aunties, uncles, you know, friends of the family. When it, so, um, so real people as opposed to virtual people. Learning to communicate, uh, and this will help them learn to communicate and get along. They should be exploring real life, starting at home, then moving out into the local area and beyond. So it shouldn't be the case that they are cooped up at home, always on the net. And even if the weather's bad or maybe, you know, it's hard to get out, it still doesn't mean that at home that the default is to turn on a device. That that shouldn't be the case. That's not that's not healthy for them. Um, now, um, there's a really nice hadith um, where the Prophet Sallallahu said, it was narrated that Hanzala Tamim al Usaidi, the scribe, said, We were with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we spoke of paradise and hell until it was as if we could see them. Then I got up and went to my family and children, and I laughed and I played with them. Then I remembered how we, ha- how we had been, and I went out and met Abu Bakr and said, I have become a hypocrite. Abu Bakr said, We all do that. So Hanzala went and mentioned that to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, O oh, Hansela, if you were always as you are with me, the angels would shake hands with you in your beds and in your streets. O oh, Hansela, there is a time for this and a time for that. That's in um, the book of Hadith Ibn Majah. So what we're seeing here is that, you know, there is a time, he, you know, this companion was playing with his um, kids and his uh, spending time with his family and his children and that was a good, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, that is a good thing. There's a time, you need to spend time doing that as well as spending time in Ibadah, you know. So that's just one example. Um, there, there are many other hadith um, about spending time with your children. Um, so we need to think, um, if our kids are on the devices, who has caused that to happen? Are we partly to blame here? You know, this main, you know, it, you would do, we all do need to revalue it, our family life. And things don't change overnight, but it's important to think, okay, how how can I improve, you know, uh, my family life? That That's something that we have to personally think about. Okay, number six, um, books, time for books. Um, as your children begin, as your child begins learning to read and write, this will require them to slow down their mind. They have to process sounds into words and words into sentences, while at the same time making sense of what they're reading. Learning to write means slowing down even more, since you have to make the letters with your pencil, spell the words and sort out your grammar to express what you want to say. Now, on the other... Now, I'm an English teacher, so um, this and anyone who's taught their child how to read or ch- write or taught any child how to read and write, and when you even think back to when you learnt... Um, you know, your reading and writing skills, everything is slow, it's not quick. However, on the other hand, electronics speed up the mind. Computer programs encourage children to expect quick fire, quick fix learning. You know, even the educational games, it's very quick, it's instant results. If they're used to computer games and websites and swiping, they're likely to find learning to read and write boring and laborious. Those who manage to get the basics often can't be bothered to practice and true literacy takes years of practice. So it's um, very important to, you know, as well as um, on screen time, they need to have time to where they're reading and we have to make an effort to encourage them and make it part of their their daily life. You know, taking them to the library, getting them to choose books that they want to, that they find interesting 
Um, and so, you know, regularly read to your child. You don't have to buy lots of books. You know, like I said, take them to the library, read Quran to them and speak to them in your native, native language. So if you have a mother, t- if you speak English, but you also have your mother tongue, whether it's um, Bengali, Arabic, Urdu, make sure, sh- you know, if you can, try to do that as well. They can pick up more than one language. Once they have learnt to read, they should read every day for at least half an hour. That's um, the kind of recommended um, guidelines. Because I have a lot of, um, I, I tutor students and uh, many parents will say, my child doesn't read. Um, but the thing is, you have to actually put the time and effort into reading and encouraging it. And they need to see you read as well. You know, if it's something they see happening around them, it will it will happen in naturally in, for, for them as well. Um, OK, so let's uh, let's look at play games with them. You know, that's something you can do. Children love to play and be amused. Computer game manufacturers have subtly hijacked the language of play. Many children now think of play as something you do on a PlayStation and games as something you play on an Xbox. As much as distracting um, children, especially boys, from real life play, which they need, need, which children need, too much virtual play may actually deter development. From a parental point of view, it's your duty to help your um, children grow up to take advantage of the good stuff rather than be distracted and damaged by the bad stuff too early on. Despite having interactivity all over advertising, there's little genuine interactivity about virtual play, at least in the simple games and websites aimed at children. The child has only limited control with no opportunity for true creativity. But children are easily fascinated and so they grow dependent on screen-based gadgetry for entertainment rather than learning to think independently. So, you you know, the marketers do, they're very good at making you think, um, if I get my child this game, it will improve their creativity. It's interactive, but um, real play is so much more important. So, you know, whether it's messy play, whether it's making things with their hands, um, you know, painting, Play-Doh, um, gardening, these are all real, that's real play, you know, dressing up, but not the dressing up where you buy a ready-made princess or ready-made cowboy outfit, you know, giving them things to then make their own play, whether it's a blanket, whether it's paper hats, that's real play um, and it's so much better for their development. Um, so now, one thing um, that's um, really important is um, there are certain games that um, I wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't play with our kids. So unfortunately, some parents allow the young children to have access to 18 rated violent games such as Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty. I'm sure there's other ones that I don't know about. Um, now, under teens, uh, under tens often persuade their parents that they're not that bad. Fathers, uncles and older brothers in particular play these games. You know, if you're as an adult, what game you choose to play, that's your, that you're an adult. But if you're playing that in front of a five-year-old, in front of an eight-year-old, um, they will want to play that as well. And then we're letting them play that thinking, oh, that's toughening them up or we're bonding. But adults need to wake up and realise that modern computer violence of this kind is seriously nasty. And because children don't experience any real pain whilst playing it, they become desensitised to this violence. So they, it, what we're teaching them is it's fun to kill, it's fun to beat up, it's fun to shoot other people. And, and that is not good. Um... There's no, there is also evidence that it encourages aggressive, violent behaviour and creates negative attitudes towards women because a lot of these um, games, as we know, the depiction of women is very sexualised, it's, it's very vulgar, it's co- um, completely un-Islamic. And, but that's all part of the marketing to get men to want to play these games. And so we have to think, what is my child sitting there watching me play? And what am I letting them play? It, it, we can't pass. You can't pass the buck on this one. It's if you're letting them watch it, it's your fault. You need to take some responsibility. Now, computer games can be exciting and some help develop new skills. 
Help your child choose wisely and play new games with him or her so they know so you know what they are. Never give in to pester power. Don't fall into buying things out of guilt. Spending time with your child is better than spending money on your child. Um, that, that's very that's really crucial. I'm going to repeat that again. Spending time with your child is better than spending money on your child. Kids want us to spend time with them, uh, but because we feel guilty or we think, yeah, for some, for some reason we've, our thinking has become a bit warped. We think if we throw money at them and buy them things, that will make them happy. When if you ask children what they really want is they, they want time um, with their parent. So the earlier you make this stand, the better. But whatever the age, be firm. If you stick with it, your child will eventually realise you can't be manipulated. So that was the point about pester power. Um, don't give in to it. And it doesn't matter if they say, oh, everyone's got it. Well, you know what? I'm not everyone's mum. I'm your mum. So therefore, I decide what you, what's good for you. You you know, that that's what I say to my kids. Um, now, this is, uh, this is a good one. Practice what you preach. Be honest. Okay. Are you spending more time with your laptop or phone than with your family? Are your kids just imitating you? Yeah, that's the, um, if that's the case, then very soon, like I said before, once they're teenagers, they won't want to spend time with you if you didn't spend time with them. And they will just mimic you. Um, you may spend a lot of time on WhatsApp uh, or whatever apps, you know, Snapchat. There's so many now. And your partner may like relaxing, playing FIFA. You know, I'm being very stereotypical here. Uh, so many of us now bring our work home with us or like me work from home and it's eat, and it can eat into your family time. So when we come home from a busy day, we all want to relax and forget about everything. And, uh, you know, things like Netflix and um, Amazon Prime, you know, and the unlimited TV shows, they, they do. We all do this, but we have to be firm with ourselves as well. We have to discipline ourselves and recognise that we need to care more about our actual family and less about the fictional characters or characters on screen. Always remember to ask yourself if you're setting a good example. So, switch, so what can you do? Switch off your laptop and put your phone on silent when sharing time with your family. Set times when you will check email and messages and stick to them. Force yourself to keep work and family separate. And don't let work-based stress overflow into your family time. Resist the, na- the urge, the natural urge, especially for women, to multitask at home. For instance, don't have the TV on when you're sharing meals and concentrate on the real-life interaction going on around the table. And there's, there's quite a lot to think about there. Now, so if um, if I'm saying to you that we need less... Um, virtual time and less internet time and less tablet time so what what could you do have some I'm, I'm just going to give a whole load of example ideas on what you could do uh, I'm not saying you have to do all of them but you you know as a parent what you can what you can realistically do so do you f- now some people may feel that it's too late and your child's already you know I can't change the way I am I can't change where my kids are um, and if I try to change, start putting down rules and, um, you know, restrictions, that I'm going to have so much stress and tantrums, it's not worth it. So, you know, just little by little, start making little changes, okay? Um, and, um, and do it slowly. Start incorporating, you know, things, make little changes. So here are some examples. Okay, going swimming or out for a walk or bike ride. You can do some easy cooking together like biscuits, fruit salads, smoothies, you know, if kids love doing stuff like that. Don't worry about the mess. Um, they'll, they'll, how else are they going to learn? You know, going to the library, like I said, choosing books to share, um, whether it's recipe books, activity books, arts and crafts. Um, using the library books to plan a meal, plan a project or picnic um, where the kids help to make the food. Teaching your kids a new skill, or um, knitting, sewing, gardening, um, you know, and getting 
with them to learn skills maybe from their grandparents or their aunties and uncles or your friends you, know, you could share different you know you swap skills rewarding them with gifts I children you know um, challenge your children to not touch their gadgets except for a specific amount of time and see to it that they use their time efficiently and then you reward them um, you know so there's um, lots of there, there's possible ideas now um, I'm, I'm going to end on a hadith um, um, so food clothing shelter love Islam and our time that's what we need to give our children so this isn't a hadith this is just the yeah, um so let me say that again food clothing shelter love islam and our time that's what we need to give our children you know phones laptops and tablets are their extras their luxuries you know their wants that we give our children um and so let's take our priorities from our creator allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and focus on our kids' real needs. Yeah, that, that's, I think that's the main thing I'd like to end with. There are hadith about uh, the Prophet Wasallam said, you know, you should teach your children how to swim. You should teach them archery. That was something they did. That, you know, it was archery was what they did at the, at the time with the, um, the Prophet Wasallam. But that shows teaching them um, active, creative um, things was so much more fun, you know. And so they're the kind of things that we should think about. And so uh, I hope, you know, that this advice was helpful. Um, there's so much more advice um, that you can read, again, online. And what I'm definitely not saying is um, that we, as Muslim parents, we should ban... Inter- well, the point is you can't, we can't now. But we have to think intelligently about how we're going to help our children to have a healthy relationship Um with their phone as they develop into adults, you know, uh, and a healthy relationship with their entertainment that they choose to watch. Um, and, you know, if it's not healthy, then they will, you know, we know there's an obesity crisis. We know there's a um, lazy, there's this lazy, lackadaisical attitude that some um, teenagers and then adults develop for the rest of their lives. So uh, I hope, you know, this... Um, podcast gave you some uh, you know food for thought inshallah okay my name is um farhat amin uh, you can uh, see listen to other podcasts on my blog which is on uh, www.muslimstickers.com and you just click on to the blog um icon okay thank you